Jackson. On behalf of my co-hosts Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is actress and TV personality Nina Senekar. And the first film we reviewed was Titano, directed by Ben Chavda. Make sure to check it out before watching our review at the link right here. See that? Right there. This one. Watch it right there. Enjoy the movie and our review. Our first film is Titano. It is written and directed by Benjamin Chavda and starring Erwin Keyes. It's the story of a former monster movie villain who is dealing with life after stardom. And there is uh, some really specific cool things about this movie that I don't want to ruin yet. So before that, Maria, why don't you tell us why you picked this film? Um, well, I actually, most of my friends are horror movie people. So I feel like I know a lot of the people who are going to be this guy in 10, 20 years. I'm sorry. It's true. Um, but. And I'm such a sucker for character actors and for kind of washed up has-been stories and this is all of those things. So it just really touched my heart and made me grin. Well, what's interesting about it is that the main star is a guy named Erwin Keyes who's well known for playing villains in many, many different films, Intolerable Cruelty, A Thousand Corpses, Tales from the Crypt. He was in The Warriors, which I, I didn't really realize, which is pretty cool. He's been in and, everything, this dude. Yeah, and he's got one, he's this really weird looking guy, and uh, he died just after shooting this film. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of perfect irony because he was like a villain guy, and he was sort of like at the end of his life, and he shot this movie, and then he died. I, I mean, um, I couldn't figure out whether, and this is gonna, this, I can't, I don't know the right way to say this, so it's gonna sound bad, but I'm, I promise you I don't mean it in a bad way. Not to speak ill of I, the dead, but. I okay. couldn't tell whether they were doing the bad acting thing on purpose, mm -hmm. right? And because when he started, and of course I recognize him because he has been in like a gajillion movies, right? Um, one of the first things that struck me was, oh, he's kind of like, he's pushing and I don't really believe him. And then I kind of got, oh, they're sort of doing this on purpose because he was supposed to be this really bad B-movie star, right? Um, so, but I couldn't tell. That was, I guess, like, I, I guess like if they had made it more obvious one way or the other, I might have enjoyed it a little more. I thought it was a really neat idea. I loved the idea of the movie, but I guess because it, it felt like they didn't commit one way or the other. I mean, it's either they're, they're doing bad acting or it's an emotionally truthful thing, right? It's one or the other. Um, and I just, it felt like it was somewhere in the middle for me, so. I kind of think they, they were pushing it like on purpose. You think so? I, I got yeah. that vibe also with like scenography, like it was just very, everything was just too, you know, perfect. Like there was the thing, uh, the chuck thing from the, you know, the, the slate, there was like the big, the chain. I don't know, everything seemed like, right. in, a, in a good way. Yeah. Like to me, it all seemed like we wanted it to look like that, but maybe I It, it was a bit vaudevillian. Yeah. A little right. over the top on purpose, maybe. Right. Like very well, broad strokes. I guess that's the thing is that, is like it took me about halfway through the film to realize, oh, that's kind of, I guess that's probably what they're doing, right? That because I mean I don't know maybe it's just because of who I am but I'm always anticipating we're gonna go for emotional truth right no matter what the situation is and whatever kind of movie we're talking about it's just the way most movies are right um, and so it always takes me a while when they're when a movie is obviously not trying to do that and so it took me a while to to be like oh well maybe maybe they're trying to be like. Maybe it's trying to be bad acting on purpose, and maybe like everything is supposed to be obvious on purpose, and you know what I mean. Like ev everything was so, you know, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm sa you know, everything was yeah, so. Yeah, it was like clowny a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I think that. But was. I feel like it was a lot of it was a nod to the sort of films that this character was supposedly in. It's very much like genre savvy as far as you know right. that was the way everything was in that style of film. So right. I really liked it. I mean, definitely, I get, now that I think about it, I mean, it kind of felt like a, like a 60s B movie, which is what he was supposed to be. But. Also the passage between black and white and color and black, it was just like the music, I don't know, the whole, the whole tone of the movie was in that direction. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, did you guys feel like he, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was trying to be a little bit more down to earth than you guys are giving it credit for, don't you think? I mean, well, that's maybe what you just I'm didn't saying, like though. the acting. Well, no, what that's I'm what I'm say. saying, though, is that I felt like he, they couldn't decide. Are you trying to do an emotionally truthful thing about a dude who, um, you know, he had this very specific sort of lifestyle and now he's at the end of his life, the end of his career, and, and nobody wants to watch him anymore, which is honestly a traumatic thing. I mean, if, you're, if you spent your whole life in front of the camera and then nobody wants to watch you, that's a big deal, right? So you could definitely make the emotionally truthful movie about that. Right? But that, yeah, but I couldn't. I yeah, felt like they couldn't decide. Like. Okay, I felt that the tone was like that, like that definitely they were pushing it, but I still got the emotion, mm. so that didn't bother me at you all. You felt sad. You felt yeah, sad. Yeah, I totally sympathized with the guy. Yeah, I mean, and it's, I mean, the beauty. I got the most sad when I learned afterwards that this guy mm. played villains his whole life, made this movie, and then <laughs> died know. of like, gigantism, which is like a disease right, apparently right. Yeah. and I mean that was just like it's kind of like sweet and sad but it's like this was his last performance was this film is like so many layers of irony it's that, really I cool. know that was that was a big <gasps> sort yeah. of moment Whoa, when you get to the yeah. end and you see his name and I knew who he was so then I saw his name I'm like what I because I didn't know he had passed away yeah. but see I like it because it does end on such a sort of triumphant note like, it, it's very kind of bittersweet all throughout, and then you've got this moment of like, ha-ha, and then you see the, you know, in memoriam. And then it's in memoriam. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a perfect little elegy to this, this guy's career. People like this, who are these people who spend their whole lives right. playing these villains, and you never really know who they are, you know? Right. That's true. Anyway, uh, I think there's not a lot to say about this movie, really. It's very short, it's very interesting, and uh, it makes a quick point to classic kind of short film. I, I guess the one thing, the, the one criticism I would have is I, I wanted one more layer deep, I think. Right. You know? It was just like, he gets the guy out of his house, I think it could have gone one more step into somewhere else, but I don't know. I don't know, I mean, it's kind of... I, I mean, from a story perspective, I thought it was a perfect ending. You know, the guy who his whole life plays, the guy who kills people, you know, this movie of his real, li real life ends with him. Sorry, I kind of gave away the end, but, you know, <laughs> ends with him killing, killing a guy, really killing a guy. That's sort of, I mean, from a story standpoint, that's fine. That's a nice button to it all. Yeah. I thought, but... He doesn't um, kill the guy, he just chases him out of the house. Oh, I thought he actually killed him. No, I think that's what Isaac wanted. That's, I think I would have liked really? that. Really? I, th I, yeah. I thought that he killed him. I would have liked if he'd like slaughtered him and eaten him. Like, in the thing. <laughs> like exactly like his character, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did something, like maybe it would have been more metaphorically resonant, I guess, if he did something like what he like the characters he played. That would be neat. Exactly. Right. Whereas instead it was just like, I'm scary, and now I'm going back to watching TV. Being right. And the, the thing about this actor is everybody said about Erwin Keyes that he was like such a sweetheart, and he was always playing these really evil, right. you know, like henchmen guys, but he was really like the sweetest man in the world. You know? Well, I did get a sweetness from him in this, in this short. Yeah. I found him very sweet. Yeah, no, me, me too. He seemed yeah. like a really sweet guy. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works or how you can submit your film for consideration, just click right here. And if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, just click right here. See this area right here that I'm pointing to right there? That one? Click right there and you can watch all the episodes that you want. See you next time.